This is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to make this triangular unfolding of a letter. You can use this triangular unfolding to unfold just about anything. We're just going to use it to unfold this thing and hopefully you can learn how to apply that to other stuff. It's a lot of fun so let's get started. So in order to create this unfolding effect we're going to first have to in After Effects create a new composition. That's our first step all the time. I'm going to be working with the HDTV 1080 29.97 preset which means I have a frame rate of 29.97 and I'm going to go with a duration of 30 frames a second. Hit OK. What I'm going to do is unfold again the letter U for you. You can unfold anything you'd like using this technique and you'll see why as we develop it. So First thing I'm going to do is create that letter. So create new text and the letter is the letter U. Now in order to make it show up on our background here, I'm just going to toggle off the transparency grid because it is not important for our purposes. And now I'm just going to scale this up to be quite large. How large would I like it? Well, I'm going to look at the title and action safe. I'm going to set one edge down there and scale up the rest to be that big. And I'm going to make sure it's aligned perfectly in the center and I'm ready to go. So we'll call this the letter. It doesn't really matter what the letter is, what this object is, it's just important that you be able to see it. Now we don't need to manipulate it at this point, so we're going to lock that layer, clicking the lock button over here. Now I'm going to create a new shape layer right there. So this is one way of doing it, or you can just go up here to the polygon tool double click on that, it'll make a polygon. So in that polygon, some things I want to do are first set the stroke down to zero. And then what I would like to do is go into the polystar, change it down to be only three points like this. And I'm going to change the outer radius down to be just a hundred. Okay. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to make it 3d and then we're going to take it and drag it down right here. Now we need to scale this up a little bit. So we're going to just work with the scale property to bring it up like so, so that it sort of fills in this space down here. We're going to call this root. So this is the root of what we'll be creating. Now I'm going to just make a note here that I'm in Adobe CC. So some of these commands you won't be able to use, but hopefully a lot of them you are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that root. This triangle is going to be what unfolds. Now I'm going to take root two and I'm going to snap it by dragging it around and holding down for me, it is command for you, perhaps control, which will allow it to snap to features. So this corner is snapping to the center of the top uh, vertex here. So it's just going to snap right there, which is great because that's exactly where we want that point to end up. Now I'm going to use the pan behind tool to move in the same way with the snapping, moving the anchor point to be there. I'm going to call up its rotation. I'm going to alter the orientation to be down like this at 0, 0, 0060, meaning it's oriented this way, putting its axis there, which means the axis when I rotate it, that's rotating on one of the axes, this is rotating on the other. So that it's going to rotate on an axis that I've now put along the edge of another layer. So that is exactly what we would like. So what this piece is going to be doing is essentially it's going to be unfolding from the first one. So I'm going to parent it to that root. And instead of root two, I'm going to call this right one, meaning this is the first piece to the right as it's unfolding. So it's unfolding is going to be operating going from negative 180, which is totally flat on there. So we're just going to set a keyframe, go ahead a bit, and then unfold it to zero, just like that. So it is unfolding in this way. It's tough to see because all the colors are the same. So we're going to create a new light out here in the scene. We're going to make it a point light. We're going to make it an intensity of 100. Okay, so now these shapes, we can kind of see uh, what they're doing, which is quite helpful for us. So this is unfolding from the back of the first shape. Now we're going to want to duplicate this and we're going to want to parent it instead of to the root, I'm going to parent right two to right one. So that this one is stuck on that one. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to change its orientation to be oriented at 0, 0, 0,300. So it comes off of that part. And what we're going to do is we'll change its starting X rotation to be at positive 180. So you can see once it unfolds from positive 180 to zero, it's kind of like a, an accordion style fold coming out. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to duplicate this, parent it to the one behind. So right three is parented to right two. We're going to adjust it up to be here, change its orientation to be at 60, and then we would like to alter this first keyframe to not be positive, but negative 180. And you can see how this pattern goes. So what I'm going to do is fill out the rest of this with the parenting, and then we'll take a look at it and see how mine compares to yours. But really it's, you just complete the pattern by creating the next one, parenting it, and at this point you should see this kind of unfolding motion. Okay, so at this point you've created a column that extends all the way up here like this. So that's pretty good. At this point we're going to pause, we're going to take all of these, we're going to hit U to look at their keyframes, we're going to select all those keyframes, we're going to hit F9 in order to easy ease them, and then we go into those easy ease keyframes, zoom in real close here, and then we pull them like so to create this kind of a shape. Okay, perfect stuff. Now the next thing that we want to do is offset all of these so that they are four frames apart in when they start doing things. Now, why is it four frames? Well, if we observe the graph of this, we can see that four frames in, one, two, three, four, it is at the apex of its movement, and that's when we want the next one to start. Okay, so we'll just take these, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, good. So now when we observe, it is unfolding itself. Now what we need to do is to fill out the rest of this shape. So this piece needs to have two things come off of it. So we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna duplicate it because it needs to have the same timing and the same relationship as this piece. And now we're going to alt drag it over here. We're going to pull up its rotation values. We're going to stick it like so. And we want to make sure that it's unfolding in a different way. If one's coming off the front, we want the other to be coming off the back. So for this one, we're going to go here, change it to be positive 180 to start so that they unfold like that. Good, good stuff. Okay, so now we need to go through and add more of these to fill out the rest of the shape. So off of this one, we have this one, and so we duplicate it, move it down here, alter its rotation to make sure that the red arrow lines up along the spine we're interested in. We need its end state to be out here at uh, 180, and we would need its start state to be at zero. Now we might need the end state to be negative 180, depending on which direction we want this to unfold, but that is going to be totally up to you. Now you want to continue this practice until you've filled out the rest of the shape. So I will continue doing that, you do it on your own, and then we'll compare yours to mine. Okay, so now you've got everything that has two things spawning off of it happening. The next step is then to take these things and continue the pattern until you've filled out the entire shape. So just really quickly here, we're going to duplicate this one, move it ahead, parent the new one to the old one. Okay, make sure that this lines up there. And then we just need to alter the end state here to be 180 so that it's coming out correct. Okay, good. Let's see this one here, duplicate it, move it ahead, make sure that it is parented to the correct parent. 
and then we want to make sure we move it so it's in the correct place and change its rotation so that it has the correct orientation first and the correct rotation second. There we go. Now we need to choose which of these will spawn one of the final pieces. So I choose this one, duplicate this, move ahead, parent it to its originator, and then we're going to alter its rotation orientation here, be at 300, let that back to see how that goes. And kind of looks like it's unfolding the wrong way. So reverse its start state. Now we observe and everything seems to be coming together. So one thing we'll need to do is just scale this up a little bit so that it fits everything in. Okay, that looks good. And of course, the first thing we need to do is imbue some turning to this first piece. So it's a rotation, move ahead a couple of frames, about 20, um, and it's rotation axis. Going to be flipping side to side, different than everybody else, but it's nice to be different. So we set a keyframe there, and we change this to be 90. Now we're just going to take these, easy ease them, go in here, imbue them with the same sort of thing. So there we go. So we've got one side animating up quite wonderfully. Good. Now if you have an asymmetrical letter that you're working with, then you won't be able to uh, save time in the way we're about to, but that's all right, because we're going to make one side we'll duplicate it onto the other. So speaking of duplication, it's time to take this letter, make it 3D, and duplicate it one time for each other layer. We're going to need 13 letters, just, just 13 of them. Okay, good. Now you want to place one under each of these root things. So let me just... Uh, Make this large, and then we will do that, moving each one under each of the blue. So your pattern should go red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, all the way down to the bottom, making sure you have enough, and there we go. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our playhead is far beyond the last keyframe, okay? And this is because when we start doing this parenting, things can get weird. We need it to parent when this final state has happened. So we're then going to parent all of these things below to the things above. So if it's a red one, parent it to the blue one above it. So red, parent to blue, red, parent to blue, and parent and parent, always just up one. This is probably where things get the most confused for people and where things can really fall off the rails. But if everything has been done correctly, when you go back, uh, things will get really weird really fast. I mean, this is an interesting thing in itself, but uh, it's not totally what we're after at this point. Now, we've got everything color-coded, which is important because I'm going to right-click on the color, I'm going to select the label group, I'm going to toggle switches and modes, and then I'm going to go into the track mat here, and set it to be alpha mat of the layers above it. So what does this do? Well, in short, it starts unfolding this thing. So what it's doing is essentially, we've got this layer, which takes up only as much space as the layer above it, and is imbued with its motion because it is stuck to it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, you can see these tiny little lines here. We're gonna select everything, I'm going to go to the mode, I'm going to set the mode to alpha add, which adds the anti-aliased pixels in here in a much nicer way. And now we're going to select everything again. We're going to up the stroke from zero to two, and that's filled everything in quite nicely. Now, why did we add the stroke at the end? Well, because if we have the stroke on at the beginning, when we're moving the anchor point, the anchor point will just go to the very edge. Now, this allows us to have a little bit of overlap between each of the parts, which can get a little bit uh, messy and gross in there, but it's better than having the gaps. I will, I will say that much. Uh, what you can do, if you really like to, is animate these on so that for each layer, they're animating from zero up to two as they're coming on. So you don't have that gap at the end, but you don't have the fissure at the beginning. 
So that's just a suggestion. Think about it if you want, but I should have thought about that at the beginning before we started duplicating everything. All right, it's too late now. Anyway, we've got this done. This is, looks good. I think I'm happy with how it goes. I'm gonna take all of these. I'm going to pre-compose them. I'm gonna call this U-arm. Good. Now inside this U-arm, uh, one of the things I need to do is take this root here and I'm going to add to it a rectangle. All right, and then what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna go into the contents here of everything. This rectangle path, I'm gonna set up to be 250 by 250 and a position uh, 125 comma zero, okay? Now I'm going to also drag it up right under the polystar path. I'm gonna add a merge paths to this and that merge paths that I'm adding is going to be uh, an intersect so that the polystar and the rectangle intersect and they make a half, okay, perfect and good. Okay, we'll go back here and now we're going to duplicate this. We're going to go layer, transform, flip it horizontally to make two. How does that look? Looks pretty good to me. And things left to do, put on collapse transformations, put on 3D, and we are away at the races. Okay, everything's looking good. Now from here, you can add more lights, you can add a background, add all sorts of things. But this is the basis of making things unfold using triangles. Uh, tragically, I wish there was a simpler, more procedural way to do this, and I'm sure there are plugins and scripts that can help you automate this process. But for our purposes, doing it manually, what you're creating is a series of linked layers that have all been rotated and stuck together to create a patchwork that then animates up. So this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. Stop by Premium Beat for all of your royalty-free music and sound effects needs. And of course, stop by the blog for tips, tricks, and tutorials in After Effects and other applications. You'll find After Effects tutorials by not only myself, but other experts in the field as we share our excellent knowledge with you. So if you want to see more of my stuff, go to evanabrams.com or check me out on Twitter at EC Abrams or uh, YouTube channel EC Abrams for other good stuff. And if you want to see more of my work on premiumbeat.com, then check out the author section on there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around the internet.